Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome to episode 14 of this perfect proliferation run. And last time we've built our graviton lenses, which means we are almost ready to get our green science up and running. Now, as you can see, green science needs the graviton lenses, but it also needs quantum chips and we haven't built those before. Now, the nice thing about building quantum chips is that it will also allow us to build a few other things. Mainly the Mark III assembling machine. So I will actually be making this build uh, on the assumption we already have the Mark III assemblers because as soon as we have the build up and running, a few moments later we can just upgrade the Mark IIs um, and thereby we have our build as compact as we can because as you can see the production speed of Mark III assembling machines is 50% higher than it is of the Mark II. It goes from 1 to 1.5 production speed. It also consumes more power, but at this point we don't really have any issues anymore with power, so we don't really care about that part. Now, in order to make those Mark III assembling machines, what we're also going to do this episode is finally have our mall of everything go Super Saiyan, for those that know that reference. And what I mean by that is we left, intentionally left a gap in our original mall so we had some room to add in the last few buildings and since we now also have warpers we also need to make sure our mall is upgraded so we have warpers available at every single part of that build so where you can request the materials from anywhere in the universe but also we can supply the buildings that it's actually making anywhere in the universe so we have a lot of things to do let's jump to it so we are going to build this new build quite close to where we already made the builds from the previous episode i really love this planet we have so much building space i mean if you just take out a few of these little nodes it's mostly stone and titanium some of the most rare items in the universe uh, you have a huge amount of uh, space to work with if only it wasn't so damn boring in terms of the color but anyway um i digress let's build some stuff shall we we are going to be building some um Smelters, um, back to basics as always. So we are going to need 20 sm uh, smelters for silicon. We are going to do that like this. We are actually going to leave two belts in between. So we are going to have one belt incoming with the ore and one belt outgoing like this. And let's actually make sure this is set to silicon. There we go. And then we have a second row of these to be making those. Now, we are also going to need some copper. So what I want to do is make the copper go out somewhere like this. And then we'll have a row of copper smelters. We actually don't need that many. So we're going to leave a little bit of space here. So we can put the ILS there. I think we should have enough room for that. We are only going to need eight of those. And that means that we have an incoming belt with or over there and then we are also going to need some iron and actually we are going to need even less of that and that's the real power of proliferation being shown over here by the way because why do we need so little of these base resources well we're going to multiply everything that comes after this with 1.25 because of the mark 3 proliferation so that is going to save us a lot and i do mean a lot of materials um Let's make sure we have an incoming belt for that as well. And then we'll have an outgoing belt over here for that. Now, um, I'm going to quickly set up the ILS and also a few other belts. And, and align this to the second part of our construction. Okay, there we go. We have our smelters all set up. And now we're ready to move on to the next part. So in order to make processors, we are going to need components. And let's leave ourselves some room to do the proliferation. And we are going to put down, um, how many? Six, I think. Yeah, let's put six over this here on this side. And this is actually not aligned. So let's move this up a little bit um, because we might as well align the first few buildings we place down if we can. There we go. And that means we have a incoming belt with silicon over here. And we're also going to need this copper. There we go. Um, that means we can have an outgoing belt. Maybe bring that down something like this with the components. And we actually need a little bit more components than this because we need a total of nine. So like this, we will have that. And then we have all the component production that we need. And you might actually think we need more than this uh, because normally it's a pretty 
intensive thing to build components. But remember, we are building this on the assumption we already have Mark III uh, production uh, assemblers, I mean. So we need about one third less than you would normally need for the same production uh, when you're using Mark II assemblers. Okay, so um, actually let's, let's move these down one more line. Um, well, if I move it down one more line, I won't actually be able to reach the outgoing belt. Now, will I? Um, no. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. We'll put it there. I was thinking about maybe aligning this uh, to make it very neat, but yeah, we won't be able to do that. Um, what I meant by making it neat is we are also going to need some circuit boards. And circuit boards, as you know, are very fast to produce, uh, especially if you're using Mark III assemblers. So we won't, we won't be needing a lot of those. Now we need, do need some iron to go along with that. And we'll have the outgoing belt for that on this side. Anything like this and then like this. So that's quite nice and neat and organized like that. Now this will be the iron and then this will be the circuit boards. All right, um, what else do we need? Well, we are going to need titanium glass and surprise, surprise to make titanium glass, you need titanium and you need glass. I know, shocking, isn't it? We are going to need uh, 10 glass smelters. So let's put those down here. These are eight, so two more, there we go. And these are going to be glass, there we go. And let's see, so we are going to have to have two incoming belts and two outgoing belts for the glass and titanium. So let's have the outgoing belt over here. And then maybe put the incoming belt something like this over here. And then we'll have the titanium on this side and we actually need 10 of those as well. So that is nice and organized. Now, this actually needs to be glass. And then this can become titanium. There we go. All right. And now what do we do about those incoming belts? Well, we can actually simply bring them down from over here because we have this ILS doing nothing at the moment. I was actually in in initially intending to this to be the normal warpers and proliferators but we'll have to bring those in from somewhere else it's not really going to be a problem i think and let's make sure we also proliferate that we're gonna have an issue with this power pole um because i want to bring it through here so what we can actually do is maybe put in a power pole somewhere else. What is a place that makes sense? If we think of, if we put it here, um, it's still on that line, so that should work, I believe. Um, yeah, I think everything is powered like this. So now we can bring it through there, but in between the smelters, and we have plenty of room over here to do the proliferation. So let's see, we need to have three proliferators over here for the three outputs. I'm actually going to flip those around because I don't like it when it overlaps the um, little corners down below. And if we put it on this line, it shouldn't do it. It will go over here rather than here. And I don't like to have belts across each other more than we have to. Okay. Um, let me organize and sorter this up for a moment and we'll continue on to the third part. Okay, so all good to go. I added in um, an additional belt for the components over here. So we actually have somewhere for that to go. I made sure we are proliferating inputs for our smelters. And now we are good to go to continue on with our processors. Now I want to be pr making the proliferation of the processors and the components over there. So actually these power towers need to go and they need to be over here so we ha can have the belt go in between the smelters and then we are going to be adding in eight assemblers for the processors and once again if you feel that's that sounds like too few well mark three assemblers are awesome so um these eight will go over here 
And now all we need to do is put in some um, titanium glass production. Now we already have the titanium in the glass, but what we also are going to need in order to make that is water. And we don't have that yet, so we are going to need an ILS to do that. Now what we are also going to need is a place to um, bring our titanium and glass to. So let's bring those up over here. And then that should leave room for an ILS down here. Maybe like so. Maybe you can actually move it up one small notch. Um, that should not clip with that belt, I believe. So we should be fine with that as well. And then we can have an outgoing belt with water. Let's make sure we are marking it up as water so we don't forget. It's so easy to forget if you set up an ILS like this to actually make sure things go on the belt. There we go. And now we have all three of those items. Now what we're going to do is we're going to zigzag our way to a lot, and I do mean a lot of titanium glass production because this recipe, if you look at it, um, it's not actually that slow, but we are going to need a lot of those because these plain filters need two. And yeah, we, we are going to need a lot of it. <laughs> That's the short version. Um, so yeah, let's make sure we have that all going and uh, don't let's not forget our, about our proliferation while we're at it. Uh, we also need to proliferate the outgoing belt for the processors. So just making sure we have enough room to do that. We can probably, probably move this a little closer to keep it slightly more compact. It's not a big deal, but might as well do that. All right. And that means that if we have these belts going out like this, um, how bad are, are we at aligning stuff now? I don't think it's going to be too bad. We might have to move everything down a little, but we'll have to find out. Um, we are going to need 21 of these. And we're going to do that like this, so seven here. And then this belt, I can select it. It's going to go like this. Let's maybe start out with this one. It's a little simpler. And wrap it back like that. And then this one goes around. And this one goes around. Can we have some sunlight maybe in here, please? No? 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 Okay. Um, titanium glass. There we go. And let's have another row of those over here. So, and that means that what we can do is, because this can be an outgoing belt like so, we can have an outgoing belt over here as well, so that is all good to go, and then all we need to do is wrap this around once more, like that, wrap this around, like that, and then wrap this around like that and remember we also need to bring in our uh, processors from somewhere uh, actually I didn't leave enough room for an outgoing belt for this this one did I um, I'll fix that just after we do the sorters because like I said we can actually bring this down one notch without any problems so it's not going to be a big deal and um, let's see outgoing belt outgoing belt so that means we are going to have seven more over here with one more outgoing belt like this and these outgoing belts we can probably combine over here like this and yeah that looks that looks pretty good i think so um and that means that we have to somewhere bring in the um processors as well so they are going to come be coming in from over here and we, we need to sort that so let me quickly do that so we actually have the sorters connected to the rest of our build okay so this looks pretty organized but um titanium glass alone isn't enough and if you thought we had a lot of assembling machines making titanium uh, sorry titanium glass yes um Plain filters are even worse. This is a 12 second recipe. 
So we really need those Mark III assemblers to not have to build, well, even more of these things than we actually need. So in order to keep the build a little bit compact, we um, are, of course, importing the Casimir crystals. That's the second component of the plane filters, uh, as you can see. We are importing them as rare resources because there's a pretty easy rare recipe for the uh, for the Casimir crystals that we'll have access to really quickly. So we are going to bring in another belt from over here and that will be going up there. So just to keep everything organized, let's mark down that this is the Casimir. And yeah, we are going to go zigzagging a little bit more. Now we had 21 assemblers making the titanium glass and we're going to let's make sure we leave enough room for the proliferation before i go on um so 21 assemblers making the glass we are going to need 32 well technically 31 but um we have a little bit of over capacity so i'm actually making 32 because that will be useful um 32 of these so this is eight and then what we're going to do is a zigzag like we, like we know how to do by now and have it go back and uh, same thing for this and i do really like how these zigzags look to be honest this should be is this aligned no this is not aligned there we go and that's 16. And then we're actually going to skip a little bit. This is zigzagging. You do need to do it correctly, otherwise you're going to run into trouble. So I have an outgoing belt over here. We have an outgoing belt over there. And we can have these right next to this outgoing belt. Because we'll actually get the inputs from this side. And like that. And we will need the second one as well. Oh, there's a little bit of belt there getting in the way. It's so dark on this planet, really. I mean, we really need to find a second planet for our larger builds once we have green signs unlocked because this is just too dark. But like I said, we do have a lot of building space. It's not all that. It's just... Um, a little bit inconvenient for you guys to watch me work in the dark half the time. I do try to wait for daylight every now and then because the days are so short on this planet. I can't really do that all the time. So I hope you will forgive me for sometimes working in the dark. What this game really needs is some way to put down lights, to be honest. That would be really cool. Okay, so this is nice and aligned, really organized. And of course, don't let's not forget about our last outgoing belt over here. And then we have all the plane filters that we need. And we also already had our processors over here. So I'm actually going to make sure this is all sorted up. And put some um, sorters in this part as well. Because I actually forgot. And then we'll finish up this build. Look everyone. Daylight. We do have it on this planet. It's so awesome. So we have this all nice and organized. So now all we need to do is put down the processing or sorry, chips. I keep calling them processors, but they're chips. And let's put them down like this. I am going to maybe not do it in the most efficient way in terms of how many belts we need for this. But it is the most uh, nice looking way I think we can finalize this build because of the nice... Um, Symmetry with the other half of uh, the build with the pair the um, plane filters is the word I was looking for. So we are going to do this like this, and like this, um, like this? Question mark? Yes, I think we should be fine. And then like that, and that means we can have the other belt going like this, and this, and this, and this. And then stop over there. And we should be able to have an outgoing belt like this. And this is going to go all the way around. Over there. And these two can output on this belt. That goes down over here. Maybe simply like that. Uh, and this can actually already output on this belt. So these are the quantum ships. We only need 10 of those, so that's nice and compact. 
pretty efficient recipe. There we go. Alrighty. And of course that does need, mean we need to proliferate this actually. Uh, okay, so we have to bring it down at some point. So let's just do that from the start. Looks a little bit more organized like that. We can just have it as a straight line. Oh, it actually needs to go down one further. Well, no, it doesn't. If we move this one like that. And we can take that one out. And then we can have this go in here. And then we can use this to actually export our quantum chips as well. Now, we also need warpers. And we need proliferation which we haven't actually done yet in this build um, which also means that we need another belt to go with the warpers all the way across over here let's place it down before we get out of reach and hey look we have an open slot here so we can make sure this actually gets warpers uh, there were some warpers already in there because i requested it earlier but we changed this up to supply all the raw materials so we want this to keep working while we're going to a different system. So we need to make sure we actually do that. All right, almost done. We just need to put in some foundations, some sorters and some remaining power. And then let's see if this works much better like this. The real question is, does it work? Nope, it doesn't because we haven't actually made a build for uh, Casimir crystals just yet. I completely forgot about it. But that's the what we'll be doing next. However, I just wanted to point out that this is kind of neat that we have the ILS for the export in the middle of our build rather than what we've usually been doing at the start and the end. So um, a little bit more original build and all in all, it's looking like a very organized, very nice looking symmetric compact build. So pretty happy about it. Um, but yeah, we're going to need those Casimir crystals if we actually want this to work. We have everything else. So... And Casimir Crystals is not the most complicated build, so let's quickly make one. Yay, we have Casimir Crystals now. And in order to save some time in this episode, I didn't actually go through the entire building process with you, but I'll walk you through what's happening here. It's, it's really not that complicated. Uh, we have the Casimir production over here, which needs Titanium Crystal, which is the biggest problem, honestly. It needs Hydrogen, which we have plenty of. And it needs Graphene, which again, we have plenty of. Uh, these are... Um, all raw resources with the exception of the titanium crystal or at least raw resources in the way we're treating them um the titanium crystal itself of course needs the organic crystal which we're also using as a raw resource and we haven't actually made a build for that yet so that's something i've also done um other than that we are mostly importing all those resources that i just mentioned straight from the ils because again organic crystals are also a rare resource we haven't ha uh, had any access to it so far so we do need to make a build for organic crystals as well and that's where this nice little green build comes in um pretty straightforward with the exception that it's really big and that's only because chemical plants are horrible uh, again i've said it before and i'll say it again we really need mark two chemical plants anyway um, just some basic graphite smelting that is then turned into plastic we need, um, this is a build that only produces six organic crystals per second, which is actually twice as much as we need for the um, Casimir crystal. So you could actually uh, build this pink build twice. Um, we don't really need that much Casimir crystal at the moment, but if you want, you can uh, build this as a two to one ratio and it will be fine. Um, we need a whole lot of these. These are, uh, to be exact, 24 um chemical plants making plastic and the oil in this build is actually being used in two places so it's going into the organic crystals themselves as well as into the um, plastic and the plastic is being fed back on the on the way back into the build for the organic crystal and then the organic crystal goes all the way on this belt on two sides actually so you can see we have a little bit of organic crystal coming here and a little bit over there and this goes back into the ILS now the problem with this ILS is that we actually don't have room for proliferators because we have three inputs we have need warpers and we have an output so in order to fix that uh, I actually had to add in an ILS all the way at the end that is only there for one purpose and that's the proliferation so it's, that's a little bit of a waste or unfortunate but yeah what can we do it's just the amount of materials that go in this build 
Now, uh, that means we now have Casimir crystals, that means we have organic crystals, and um, yeah, then we can go back to our little build for the, or not so little build actually, for the um, chips, and let's see if we can get this to work now. So, I haven't actually enabled it yet, so let's find out together. Um, hello, can we click this? Yes, we can. We need some of those, we need some of those. Let's make sure we put this on the correct dot, otherwise it won't work. Um, let's see, so we have actually no... Why don't we have any... Silicon coming in, because I haven't actually enabled it. Okay, there we go. Um, this all seems to be working. We have a lot of copper already, we have some iron already so that's all being proliferated that looks really well um let's see we have the glass here we have the titanium as well that is working like intended as well we have the circuit boards and the components being proliferated so that's all good as you can see our processors have started to work uh where are those going those are going over here we are proliferating them all the way over there so let's check up on our titanium crystal Hey, well, the build works, uh, but I do want to double check if everything is working. So as we can see, we have these three, two rows of titanium crystal already working. And that the third row is not working has everything to do with the fact that it's still buffering. But as you can see, the first items are already getting through to the third row. So in a few minutes, this entire build should be working. Once again, that is the thing with perfect ratio builds, because you don't really overproduce anything too much. Um, it will take a while for the entire build to actually be saturated and start working at full speed um okay <laughs> so a lot of plane filters being produced here at the first three rows already and as you can see here as well the uh, last rows are starting to start up hey and this is why we double check everything there's a little belt connection missing here and that's fixed now the third row will start working as well um, that means we have now a lot of those playing filters coming in, a lot of processors coming in. And as you can see, most of the quantum chips are already working. But the third, sorry, fourth row of playing filters wasn't connected. So uh, it'll take a few seconds. But as you can see, the last few items are already coming in. So this will be working now as well. And then it goes all the way back. It's proliferated and it's awesome. All right. Now, guys, I think we're good to go for green science. So let's go back to our science facility. And here we are at our science facility. And as you can see, all our science is working really well, with the exception of purple science. And that is because there is a ton of silicon going into that production. And I think we've probably exhausted the few um, places that we were mining that, that were left. So we'll have to do something about that. However, we have everything we need, so we shouldn't have any trouble finishing this up um we need some science facilities and we're going to place them down over here now i'm going to make this build in such a way that you can either use it as a standalone to upgrade what you already had now let me count these out so these are one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then we'll have ten more of those and ten more of those uh, th th those were not 10. Right? No. There we go. And then the same thing over here. Uh, so so at first this will be an add-on to the ex already existing facility. But of course you don't want to have to place down two blueprints every time you want to expand your science. So I will make it two blueprints uh, on the website so that you can scale up easily if you want it. To want to... Now, do we like this clipping? No, we don't. So we are going to move this out a little bit. Um, I don't like it when the ILS goes through other buildings. It just looks sloppy, I think. So let's just do it like this. It's not the biggest build in the world anyway, so we might as well use the space that we have. Now, we are going to be request. Well, first of all, let's put the recipe in. So we need the lenses and the quantum chips, and we should have both available by now. So what we're going to do is the following. We're going to request those first of all from here. Um, quantum chips, quantum chips, where are you? There you are. We can pretty much demand all that we want. And the same thing holds for our um, 
lenses. Now, we of course, we also need some warpers and we need some proliferation and we need those the other way around. So, because I have been doing it like that from the start, so might as well keep doing it. Don't need a lot of this, but still. There we go. And that means that we should now be ready to do the following. Um, let's have the quantum ships on this side. And then all the way through. There we go. And the lenses on this side. And then we actually don't need the other eyeless, so. Uh, yep. I should probably move those one slot. So that we don't have to use the other side. There we go. And this, oh, this is the incoming belt, so it should go like that. And then, of course, this is going to be the green science. Well, um, <laughs> we have tiny, tiny, tiny amounts coming in. Uh, this is, of course, not really what we want to see necessarily. Um, but that's going to be really quickly to fix, uh, really easily fixed once we get the um, silicon production up and running. I did save um, at least one node of silicon on Reddington so that I could avoid running out halfway through my playthrough, first of all. Um, but I also made sure that uh, that is there so that we can um, scale up. I just haven't done it yet, so I will do that quickly after this. And I will finish this build and then let's see um, if that actually works like I'm claiming it will. And there we go. We restored, at least partially restored, our silicon production. We have not that much silicon left in our system, so it's not going to be fast, but we are producing... Uh, green signs now and we are getting ready to leave our system at least uh, leave our system to make sure we get more silicon and a lot of other stuff but that's the next episode before we go there there is a few things that i want to mention so first of all since we are now in the process of making green signs you should be changing your warper setup to the one that uses green science rather than graviton lenses not only is it way more efficient to make it from green science it will actually speed up your science production as well because uh, this isn't taking up green lenses and yeah it's a lot more efficient to first make science and then make the warpers rather than making the warpers from the um, lenses um, something else that we need to uh, do is upgrade our mall and i've actually already done it um, if you remember there were a few little spots left in our mall when we first designed it and I've now filled those up with a few buildings uh, specifically the uh, launching facility for the rockets that are as you can see are now actively being made um, I've also included a build for the mark 3 assemblers which we are currently low on particle broadband because once again we don't have that much silicon in our system but once you get a few of these going and since you are probably playing a lot faster than I am because I'm recording and redoing and revamping all kinds of stuff along the way uh, you will probably have Mark III assemblers by now. Actually, I do as well. I picked a few up. I think I have like 60 on me or so. 83. Um, so don't forget to go back and upgrade the facilities that we've made in this episode. You don't have to go back and redo the other ones because they are designed to work with Mark II assemblers. But you do need to go back and upgrade the ones that we've built in this episode. So that is the quantum chips, the organic crystal, the Casimir. Um... And that's about it. You could also consider upgrading, of course, the uh, assemblers in your mall. You don't necessarily need to do that, but might as well while you read it. And um, see this empty assembler? That is intended to make the most awesome building in the game, the advanced mining machine. Um, I actually left, I think, two buildings out of the uh, mall simply because they are quite annoying to make in a mall uh, that is already really full. Uh, that is the artificial star, which we haven't even unlocked yet, but that needs um, actually not that many different materials, but it does need the, uh, what are these called? Uh, annihilation constraint spheres that we haven't made yet. 
Um, you can probably fit that into the mall anyway, so I might look into doing that later on. Um, but yeah, for now we, we can do that and we don't have this research yet, so I can also not make it in the mall simply because we don't have access to the research. Um, the second building that is not in the mall is the Mark II smelter. So even though this is a or it's actually called the plane smelter, it's really awesome, but it also uses uh, unipolar magnets, which we don't have access to. They are very rare, um, so you don't need to be mass producing them across the universe anyway. Um, but we will be making a build specifically for the plane smelters at some point, just to make sure that once we get access to the uh, unipolar magnets, that we are, of course, able to use them. All right. Um, I've also upgraded them all with warpers, so this is actually exporting to wherever we go in the universe, we have access to all the buildings that we need. Now, the annoying thing about the mall is that when we initially built it, we didn't have access to warpers, we didn't have, have access to a lot of things. So, um, you can really easily upgrade the first version of the mall to this one by, for example, just inserting um a little tiny piece of uh, the slice that we've added in here now so what i recommend that you do is that you first research the advanced miner that i'm researching now as well that you then um either completely replace them all with with this one that sounds a lot more work than it is because if you just empty your inventory you just put a box to the side uh empty your inventory delete the entire thing place the blueprint um because of all the materials being set fairly low, it should be very easy to just f put it back in. You shouldn't have any issue with overflow or anything like that. So it takes a few minutes, but then you have a completely upgraded uh, and fully um, upgraded with all the new buildings as well. Um, but again, make sure you first research the advanced miner, otherwise you will have an empty assembler like I have here. So I will research it, upload the blueprint, and then put it online so that you Assuming that you have it researched, it will actually be there. Um, in the next episode, we will be um, going for basically setting up our entire production. And I'll um, give you a few tips and guidelines on where to start and how to do that easily and efficiently. But for now, I think we've covered most of the things that we've wanted to cover in this episode. Now... Once again, make sure you go back and upgrade it. I actually made one change to one of our builds. So let us find our Casimir crystal build. I think it's in this direction. Side note, doesn't this look just awesome? I think it does with all the color coding and it's really starting to be a massive facility. Um, yeah, so the um, Casimir crystal actually used, it, used a lot more hydrogen than I noted initially so we had to upgrade the belt a little bit to actually make sure it works and hey look i made use of sackers so it's about two full belts of um hydrogen that it needs so they are now in all right guys um i think that was a lot of builds for this episode so i hope you enjoyed that if you did and you're still listening to me by now Make sure that you like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps out the visibility of this channel. So don't forget to do that. And I will hopefully catch you in the next one.